So please welcome stage my friend Bill Currington. So, um, I joined this, this uh, Tiger flight, 
Uh, also, uh, my, my career field was security police, which is what I always wanted to be. I always wanted to be a Chicago cop. I wanted to be in law enforcement because all my mom's friends were cops. And that's what I wanted to do when I got back. So, and that's exactly what I got. I was uh, in security. <clears throat> and so, uh, my first duty station was uh, was Nepal, Thailand. It was a, a Tiger flight. It was a night flight. We uh, worked really late from um, 10 to 8 in the morning. And um, these stories I want to tell you that I experienced were stories with snakes. Um, the, nothing, nothing really horrible, but they were, they were, it was interesting. It was interesting. Um, I will always love, again, like I was telling you about, so powerful. Um, I love to walk. I love to walk in the parks. I love, I was inquisitive. I liked, I liked animals. I used to put bugs in spider webs and watch them run out and catch them and take them back to their webs. I liked animals, um, and I still do. That's why I'm here in Colorado. I love the forest. I love, I just love nature, you know? So, when I, when I got to the uh, base, and I got to working with Tiger Flight, and they put me on my first duty assignment, which was a 30-foot tower. Uh, we didn't have a perimeter fence. And uh, I climbed this tower, and I'm sitting in there, and uh, I noticed a guy going by with a, with a rifle on, on top of this vehicle, and he was taking shots at all of our towers. And that was the very first time I heard the sound of a bullet as it went by my head. And I called it in, and um, my crew chief, I saw him coming with his, the headlights of the Jeep, and he did a U-turn and went back. Oh. And uh, he got court martial for that. And um, uh, we're not supposed to put any rounds in your chamber, but I put one in mine because I noticed this guy was still coming, and I didn't know if he was going to come on over. But he continued on, and by the time all the rest of the crew came, but this guy had long gone, was, was gone. And so um, that pretty much ended that night. The next couple of nights I had another tower, and then I went up into it. And I had to, I, I needed a 1014, a latrine break. And uh, I called it in, and they were taking their time to come and get relieve me. So I said, well, I'm going to have to crawl out of this tower and go out in the woods and, and, and take care of my business. So um, I went out there. Um, Climbed down, went out to this little clearing area of the woods, found a little log or something laying there, and I sat there, pants down around my ankles, and I'm sitting there, and it's quiet, and I hear the noise. I hear the just shh sound, and then I hear it again. I hear shh, shh, shh. And I'm sitting there, you know, butts up, down around my ankles, and I hear this shh, shh. And I'm sitting there, and I take out my flashlight, red lens. And I'm looking, and I see these marks, and I'm sitting there, and I see this snake, this big snake. He goes right by me, like I'm looking at a train. <laughs> all these markings, it's big. I'm, it has to be. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. A 20 foot at least. And if he went by me, I could have reached out and rubbed him as he went by. I'm sitting there, you know, still pants up down here, and it's going. And I'm looking, I'm saying, my gosh, my gosh. And then finally I see the end of it, and it goes out to the road. And um, by this time, the guys are coming to relieve me. And then they see it, and they, 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 they run over it. It's the first two wheels, and then the, the back six. And um, they totally forget about me. But by this time, I'm up, and I got my pants up and everything. And uh, they, it goes into a hole, and they take out a shotgun, and they, and they shoot it. And um, take it to the... Uh, canine Bureau, where the taxidermists and where they put all the animals and things and that they find in jars and things. So uh, that was that story. The next night, <clears throat> I had to go to the officers' quarters because there was having some problems with people stealing their bikes. So, <clears throat> so I'm going to walk in around on duty, and then there's this huge pond, this lagoon kind of thing. And I'm out there looking again, you know, I, I just like animals and I'm looking at everything, you know, and, um, and I'm looking at everything and um, I see a ripple and I go, oh, what a ripple. And so I go over and lean over into it and I look and I get 
I get, I get on it just like this almost, and I'm looking. I thought it was a frog. I really did. And, and I'm looking. And then I see another ripple like way over there. And, then, and I, I take my flashlight and I'm looking. And then his tongue comes out. And I'm like this. I'm going, oh, it's a snake. And then that's his tail over there. And another ripple. And so I just, so I can see him now. And I'm going like this, whoa. And of course I just ease back. I just ease back. Ah, uh, the next story was uh, the one where I had to operate a machine gun bunker right there at the Gulf of Siam. And uh, this bunker was made out of uh, 50 gallon barrels that went around you. You had a little roof to protect you from the rain. And I was on, on duty and here, I'm sitting there relaxing, thinking about how far away I am from Chicago. And, and I see all of the, I see the, between each barrel is about this much space. So I'm sitting back relaxing and I hear the sounds of like 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 rain and it's, it's coming down. And I see it's coming down between the barrel here and, and then there. it's coming down here and here and here and here. I said, This is a huge snake in here. Oh, so I call it in, I said, I have snakes in my bunker. So the guys come out and we tear it all down. And it was three cobras in there. Oh, That's what was in there. And uh, they took them and took them to the Canon Bureau again, where they keep those things, and we build it all back up again. Um, one of the other little incidents that happened, uh, this was with a hornet. I fell into a little nest of some kind. I was running to the chow hall, and um, I had on my regular civilian pants. And I fell into this hole, and these little fellas started flying everywhere, and I, I brushed them off. I thought I was OK, and I continued running. Uh, to the chow hall, and little did I know, one head went up my pants leg. So he got all the way up to about here, and he stung me three times, but I thought I got shot. <laughs> I thought I got shot. And I started running, because I, I just didn't think that's what it was. I had to run so far. And so I'm still running, and then I, this leg becomes the old when I'm dragging it. And now I'm on one knee, and I'm dragging it. So guys are coming by in a Jeep, and they're asking me what's wrong. And I said, I've been shot. <laughs> they grab me, they don't see no blood. And, and now I'm all, I guess I have had an effect with, with the sting. You know, they, they could repeatedly sting you, you know, they, they, theirs don't get stuck in you like the beat. So um, they take me to the infirmary, and uh, the doctor pulls my pants down to right about to here. He says, Something bit you, what bit you? And I'm going, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what bit me, I don't know. So, he takes the pants off, he lays me down, and he's trying to look at the wound and says, something bit you, what? and I don't know what it was. And, and then down in the folds of my pants, you can hear this zzzz. <laughs> it's still in there, so he kind of moves it around, so of course it flies out and lands on the wall, and he smacks it and kills it. Um, going back to um, my grandmother, she, she told me, you know, no grandbabies left in overseas. So so I was there for six months before I went downtown. Uh, the guys kept saying, Bill, man, you need to come downtown with us. Man, I know your chest got to be heavy. You just sitting there, you, man, you need to come with us and have a good time, man. You've been here for six months. You don't know what it's like. So I said, OK, I'll go with you. So I went downtown. I decided to go downtown and hang out with the guys in the bar. And so we're sitting there, and I'm sitting there watching everybody. I get a beer. And we're just sitting there, and I'm watching all the going-ons and all the interactions with everybody. But I didn't want to have anything to do with the women there. And so over in the corner, there was this young lady. And um, I asked the people, why, what's wrong with her? Why is she over there in the corner by herself? <laughs> and uh, the guy said, she's pregnant. I said, you mean she's already pregnant? <laughs> and he says, yeah. I said, Okay, so uh, I go over there and I, I talk with her and uh, her name was Thim and me and Thim became really, really, really awesome good friends and um, she took me all around Thailand. We used to get him a little bot bus, a bot is a nickel. You can pay one nickel and go for miles back in those days. This is still talking 1968, 69. And uh, we went traveling all over uh, Thailand on a little bot bus, a little three-wheeled carpet. He just, she took me everywhere, and we, we explored everywhere, and just had a wonderful, wonderful good time. And I just want to tell you again, the power of thought 
is so awesome because uh, I had such a wonderful time in Thailand. Uh, I traveled all over the place. I went to little ashrams. I, I got into Taekwondo. I met so many beautiful, wonderful people. Um, and I would go on walks through the park and the jungle, and the guys in the barracks thought I was crazy. And my one last story, uh, if I can remember this, um, um, I met this, uh, I went on one of my walks. I found this field of marijuana, just like cornfields in Kansas. <laughs> marijuana, just acres of marijuana. I was like, oh my gosh, you know. So I was walking through there, and I grabbed all of this up. I was grabbing all the dead leaves, all the leaves, and I was stuffing them in my pocket. Stuffing them all in my pocket and took it all back to the barracks. I said, God, you're not going to believe what I found. Y'all should have went with me. It was crazy. And I, of course, I took it all out and shared it with all of you. That was my story.